Hi, I've been using an ASUS RTAX86U as the main wireless router in my house for almost three years now. And in this video, I'm going to share with you five tips that I think whoever owns or planning to own one should know. Now, before we start, I just need to quickly point out that I've already reviewed that device twice. Once three years ago when I had first bought it, and once one year after using it. I've done all kinds of speed tests, Wi-Fi range tests, and so on and so forth. And I still believe in everything I said in those videos. So if you're interested in that kind of information, those videos are linked in the video description. But we are now in 2024 and that device is obviously beginning to show some age. That's why I thought of sharing some tips that can hopefully help us to keep on using that device maybe for another few years. Why not? Number 1 this has been a rock solid wireless router in terms of stability, speed, Wi-Fi range and overall features and performance. Only if it is used as a standalone wireless router or access point and not as part of a mesh system. Huh? You see, it's a dual band wireless router with 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz radios. When used as a standalone device, it can dedicate those two bands for connecting clients only, which is great and as I mentioned, it does that job perfectly. But when participating in a mesh network, which is called AI Mesh for the ASUS devices, it sacrifices these radios and uses them for both the backhaul connection and the clients. This has a negative effect on the overall quality of the Wi-Fi for the clients, and I would strongly suggest to avoid it if possible. So the bottom line is, this is a great device if you only need to have a single wireless router in your network. However, if you need to have more, perhaps to extend the coverage area, I would highly recommend using a wired backhaul connection and not a wireless backhaul. This way the wireless radios will still be dedicated to the clients and not shared with the backhaul. If the backhaul has to be wireless, then I would recommend purchasing a tri-band wireless system so that the third band can be dedicated for the backhaul. Number two. There is a feature in that wireless router called Smart Connect. I actually have a video on that with all the details that you might need to know, so check it out if you are interested. Essentially when enabled, instead of using separate Wi-Fi names and passwords for each of the bands, it uses the same name and password. So for example, when I search for the Wi-Fi networks maybe on my smartphone, I will see only one network. But when I connect to that network, then that device will decide whether it should use the 2.4 GHz band or the 5 GHz band. On paper it seems really nice because it makes everything so much simpler, but in reality it is... Eh. Because sometimes when you enable the Smart Connect feature, some devices have difficulty connecting to the Wi-Fi. And in my experience, for the most part it is just better to disable it and use separate Wi-Fi names and passwords for each of the radios. This way I get to choose which network, I mean which band I want to connect to. In my case and in my network, I only use the 2.4 GHz band for the smart home devices and use the 5 GHz band for my main devices such as computers and smartphones. So having separate Wi-Fi names makes it much easier for me to implement that network design. Number 3 when you set up your Wi-Fi for each frequency band, as part of the process you can manually select the channels and also the bandwidth of those channels. Obviously, the wider the channel you choose, the faster your Wi-Fi will be. Well, at least on paper. Because in reality, the wider channel you choose, the more chance of Wi-Fi interference. It is more likely your Wi-Fi will overlap in frequency with a neighboring Wi-Fi. And if that happens, which is quite likely if you live in a crowded area, then using wider channels not only doesn't make your Wi-Fi faster, but quite the opposite. It can make things even worse. 
So in my case, the priority of my 2.4 gigahertz band, which is dedicated to my IoT devices, is not necessarily speed, but rather availability and reliability. For that reason, I changed the channel width from 40 megahertz to 20 megahertz. For the 5 gigahertz band, I could choose up to a 160 megahertz channel, which is great if there is no interference. However, if there is interference, it is best to choose a smaller channel width. In my case, I use 80 megahertz and every everything works great. Obviously each environment is different, so to better understand the situation in your area, you can conduct a simple site survey, and one way to do that is with the help of the Wi-Fi analyzer apps that we covered in that video. Number 4 this wireless router is packed with many features and one of them that I definitely suggest taking advantage of is the quality of service or QoS. Implementing QoS in a home network helps manage bandwidth effectively, prioritize critical applications and enhance the overall performance and reliability of the network, resulting in a smoother and more enjoyable user experience for all household members. For example, if you are a gamer, then you definitely want to prioritize gaming traffic over other traffic. I see many people never give quality of service a try, but I highly recommend using it, especially with the professional level QoS that is available in this wireless router. Number 5 Last but definitely not least, if you're deciding to buy this wireless router in 2024, then I would suggest going for the Pro version because it has a more powerful processor, 2 GHz quad core compared to 1.8 GHz quad core. Having more processing power in a wireless router leads to improved performance across the board. Because a wireless router is a complicated device performing many tasks simultaneously. If the processor is not powerful enough, it will definitely show its negative effect in one of those tasks. So it doesn't hurt to have a powerful processor as it enables faster routing speeds, reduced latency, and efficient handling of multiple tasks, making it more future-proof, ideal for scenarios with high data traffic and numerous connected devices. The Asus WRT Merlin is also available for the Pro version, so you can install it if you want to utilize even more professional features. Okay, so I guess whatever we said in this video was one way or another related to network design. So I guess it should be safe to say that if I maintain good network design, then I should be able to keep using that device for a few more years. I mean, it's been a great device for me and it's not fair to replace it so soon. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you liked it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Share it if you think others might like it too. And subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. Thank you again and I will see you next time.